गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स इन द कॉन्टिन्यूशन ऑफ चैप्टर लाइट रिफ्लेक्शन एंड रिफ्लेक्शन वी विल स्टडी टूडे अबाउट स्पेरिकल लेंसेस स्पेरिकल लेंस इज ए ट्रांसपेरेंट मटीरियल बाउंडेड बाई टू सर्फेस वन और बोथ ऑफ विच आर स्पेरिकल स्पेरिकल लेंसेस आर ऑफ टू टाइप्स कॉन्वेक्स लेंस एंड कॉन्केव लेंस Convex lens. It is thicker in the middle and thinner at the edges. It is thicker in the middle and thinner at the edges. And concave lens. It is thinner in the middle and thicker at the edges. Thinner in the middle and thicker at the edges. It may form real or virtual image. It may form real or virtual image. It depends on the. It depends on how. how much distance the object is placed from the from the lens now it always form virtual image concave lens always form virtual image the convex lens is also called converging lens it is also called converging lens because it converges the light rays falling on it at a point the rays of light parallel to the principal axis after refraction Through a convex lens, meet at a point on the principal axis. That point is called principal focus. So it converges the light falling on it. So convex lens is called converging lens. It is called converging lens. Concave lens. Concave lens is called diverging lens because it diverges the light falling on it. Rays of light parallel to the principal axis after refraction get diverged and appear to come from a point on the principal axis. So it diverges the light. So it is called diverging lens. Okay, the rays of light parallel to the principal axis meet at a point which is called principal focus. In this case, concave lens, the parallel rays. It uh, it diverges the rays, okay, or the, or the rays may appear to come from a point on the principal axis. So it is called diverging lens. So these are the basic difference between concave and convex lenses. Concave and convex lenses they are generally used in spectacles to correct the defect of vision. Convex lens it is used in hypermetropia. to call hyper in case of hypermetropia in spectacles to correct the defect and concave lens is used to correct myopia or also these two lenses are used in various devices such as telescopes binoculars etc okay students now some important terms in connection with spherical lenses some important now we will study some important terms related to spherical lenses first center of curvature the center of curvature of the surface of a lens is the center of the sphere of which it forms a part it forms a part this is a convex lens and this is a concave lens okay convex lens now if we extend this it forms a sphere okay and this sphere has a center so that center point is called center of center of curvature also when we extend this part when we extend this part it forms a sphere and that sphere has a center so that is called center of curvature now as because a lens has two surfaces a lens has two surfaces so it has two center of curvature because it has two surfaces so it has two center of curvature c1 and c2 so c1 and c2 are two center of curvature of the lenses similarly in case this is a convex lens this is a concave lens in case of concave lens it has two surfaces This is called inverse two surfaces. When we extend this part, it forms a sphere, and it has a center, which is called center of curvature. Okay, so in this case, again two center of curvature C1 and C2. Now radius of curvature. 
the radius of curvature of the surface of a lens is the radius of the sphere of which the surface forms a part again now this when we extend this it forms a sphere this center this is the center of curvature so the distance this distance from the surface of the lens up to the center of curvature is called radius of curvature the radius of the sphere this is called the radius of curvature from c1 to this distance this is called radius of curvature okay so the radius of curvature of the surface of the lens is the radius of the sphere of which the surface forms a part now again as it has two surfaces it has two radius of curvature both convex and concave lens has two radius of curvature r1 and r2 so r1 and r2 are two center of uh, two radius of curvature of lenses now next principal axis principal axis it is an imaginary straight line passing through the two centers of curvature of a lens an imaginary line passing through c1 and c2 c1 and c2 of concave and convex lenses is called its principal axis now optical center the central point of a lens is called its optical center the central point of the lens is called its optical center it is represented by the letter o o in case of convex lens here this is the optical center it is represented by o similarly in case of concave lens the center point of the lens is called optical center which is represented by o in this diagram now the next term is fifth term is principal focus a narrow beam of light parallel to the principal axis either converges to a point or appears to diverge from a point on the principal axis after refraction through the lens this point is called principal focus so a narrow beam of light parallel to the principal axis after refraction converges at a point in case of convex lens okay and this point of conversion is known as principal focus similarly this narrow beam of light after refraction through concave lens appear to diverge from a point and that point is known as principal focus so principal focus is the point where the ray of light either converges in case of convex lens or diverges in case of concave lens now as a lens has two surfaces so all lenses have two principal foci these are represented as f1 and f2 so these principal foci are represented as f1 and f2 now the next important term is focal length focal length it is the distance between the principal focus and the optical center of the lens the distance between the optical center and principal focus of a lens is called focal length it is represented by small f it is represented by small f so this distance this is the optical center and this is principal focus so the distance between the optical center and principal focus is called focal length so this is the optical center of concave lens and this is the principal focus so this length is known as focal length focal length is represented by small f it is represented by small f by the letter small f now aperture the effective diameter of the circular outline of a spherical lens is called its aperture so the diameter of the circular outline of a spherical meter of a spherical lens is called its aperture so it is called its aperture the effective diameter of the spherical lens
Now next is rules used for drawing images formed by spherical lenses. Now in case of spherical lenses, how can we make ray diagram? So in order to make ray diagram, we should know certain rules. So what are the rules for making ray diagrams? We will first of all see that. First rule, in a convex lens, a ray of light parallel to the principal axis after refraction passes through the principal focus on the other side of the lens. Now what happens? This is convex lens. Okay. If a ray parallel to the principal axis, this is a incident ray. Okay, this is our principal axis. This is the optical center. This is F1. This is F2. Pencil focus first, pencil focus second. Now, if a ray of light parallel to the principal axis, then after refraction, it passes through the focus, principal focus on the other side of the lens. So, it is incident and after refraction it gets refracted through this lens and if, a parallel, if it is a parallel ray, is the ray parallel to the principal axis. So, after refraction it goes, it passes from this principal focus, F2. Okay, it passes through the focus on the other side of the lens. This is the first rule. In case of concave lens, now when a ray of light parallel to the principal axis, this is the ray of light, it is parallel to the principal axis, this is the principal axis, O, this is F1, F2, F2. Now, a ray of light this is the incident ray parallel to this principal axis. So after refraction, after refraction it appears to diverge from the principal focus lo located on the same side of the lens. So it gets refracted. This is a refracted ray. If we extend this, so it meet at this point which is called principal focus. So it meet at, it appears to meet at F1. So this is the principal focus located on the same side of the lens. So this is the first rule that when a ray passes parallel to the principal axis, then it after refraction, after refraction it appears it passes from the principal focus. In case of convex lens on the other side of the lens, or in case of concave lens. On the same side of the, it appeared to diverge from the focus located on the same side of the lens. Now the second rule. In a convex lens, a ray of light passing through the principal focus after refraction goes parallel to the principal axis. Now this is the convex lens. What is the rule? This is optical center. This is F1 and this is F2. A ray of light passing through the focus. So this is a pencil focus. If a incident ray of light, incident ray passes through this principal focus, and after refraction, it emerges parallel to the principal axis. This is our principal axis. So after refraction, this ray emerges parallel to this principal axis. Now, in case of concave lens, a ray of light directed towards the principal focus after refraction goes parallel to the principal axis. Now this is concave lens. This is our principal axis. F1 and F2. These are the principal focus. Now a ray of light directed parallel to the directed towards the principal focus. So directed towards the principal focus so after refraction goes parallel to the it goes parallel to the principal axis goes parallel to the principal axis this is the incident ray 
diet it towards the focus so after refraction it goes parallel to the principal axis so this is the second way ki if the ray of light passes through the principal focus then it emerges parallel to the principal axis then it emerges parallel to the principal axis now third and the last rule for spherical lenses now a ray of light passing through the optical center of a lens will emerge without any damage so a ray of light passing through the optical center of either convex lens or a concave lens it pass it will emerge without any damage this is our convex lens okay this is figure Five and this is figure six. This is convex lens, optical center. This is f one and this is f two. So what is the rule? A ray of light passing through the optical center. If a ray of light passing through the optical center, then it will it will emerge without any deviation. It will emerge without any deviation. Okay. Similarly, in case of concave lens this is optical center this is f1 this will focus first this will focus second so a ray of light passing through the optical center of this concave lens pass without any deviation it will emerge without any deviation so optical so if an incident ray pass from the optical center then it will emerge without any deviation from the optical center so this is all about the rules of the of ray diagrams for making ray diagrams in case of spherical lenses